Hello everyone and welcome back to Study Onion and today we're going to be talking about the night sky and moving on to the topic 6 of celestial observation. Let's get started! So the entire night sky is split up into 88 official constellations and typically with constellations they have no significance in relation to their name. However, Asterisms are a popular pattern of stars that have do have a likeness to their names. And you might be asking quickly, what is the definition of a constellation versus a asterism? So a constellation is just a defined region in the sky, which is actually typically named after an asterism that it contains, whereas an asterism is just an unofficial popular pattern of stars that do have a close likeness to their names. The stars in an asterism might belong to the same constellations or they can also belong to different constellations. So what else can you observe in a regular observing session? So during an observation session, it's quite likely that the observer might see a meteor and they look like a bright streak of light caused by a thing a meteoroid burning up in the atmosphere. Another thing that you could possibly see is a comet, but comets are actually quite difficult to spot. They would seem like a fuzzy object with one or two tails, so an ion and a dust tail possibly, which moves slowly over the sky from night to night. Now, supernovae are actually quite rare for an observer to see, but if you did see one, it would look like a bright new star and be visible for a couple of weeks before slowly fading. And on most evenings, it's actually possible to observe one or more of the planets. And unlike the stars, they do not appear to twinkle and move through an imaginary strip of light called the zodiacal band which is centred on the path that the sun takes during one year, the ecliptic. Now, you might have heard of the northern and southern lights, and the official like astronomical name for them is Aurora Borealis and Aurora Astralis. And these are the dazzling displays of green, yellow and red curtains and whirlpools of light in the sky. And they're generally visible from the polar regions. However, sometimes they are observed from um, mid-UK latitudes, where you could possibly have seen them. So there are three main constellations that you have to learn to recognise and draw for the GCSE astronomy course. The first one that you must know is Cassiopeia, and it looks like a W shape, which you can actually see on the screen now. And these images are from Stellarium, by the way, which we'll talk about a tiny bit later. Um, there is Cygnus, which is at the um, bottom left, and this is called the Swan constellation. And finally, you might need to know how to draw Orion. Uh, you might have heard of Orion from a couple of different sources, but it actually has some very popular asterisms like Orion's Belt and uh, Orion's Nebula and so on. Um, but you would need to know how to draw and recognise those sets of stars within the Orion constellation. Now there's also a couple asterisms which you need to know. So firstly you will need to know what the plough asterism looks like. You also have to know what the Southern Cross asterism looks like and it's basically just a cross in the sky. Thirdly, you might have to know what the Summer Triangle asterism looks like and it contains three stars which you might need to know. It is Deneb, Vega and Altair. Now, the final asterism that you might need to know is the Great Square of Pegasus. And the name gives you a great clue here because the asterism generally looks like a square. Now, you also need to know which asterisms that we use as pointers. 
And by pointers, I mean we look at the asterism and look for another star which we can find, find by following points at the asterism. And to show you what this means, the plow asterism is used as a um, pointer for two different stars. Firstly, if you look in the direction on the screen here, you can find Polaris, which is also known as the Northern Star. And you can the second star you can find is following the arc to Arcturus. So if you follow the arc of the plow, you'll be able to find Arcturus. The star there that I've just pointed out has a very faint acquaintance, a double star. And you've got to be careful about that when you are drawing your diagrams of the plow. The second asterism that we use as pointers is the great square of Pegasus. And the idea is that if you follow downwards from the fourth, uh, the bottom right corner of the great square of Pegasus, you will be able to find formal hout. Now, just because we've talked about the fact that the plow has a double star, we want, I'm just going to quickly cover the difference between binary and double stars. So a binary star is like a system of two different stars where one star revolves around the other or both revolve around a common centre. A double star, on the other hand, and you can see that in the picture there, are two stars that appear to be one when they're seen with the naked eye, either because they could be a binary star and orbit one another, or they happen to be on the same line of sight, even though they're separated by great distance. And these are called um, optical binaries. Now, the software that you can use to tell you what kind of stars you'll be looking at in the night sky is Stellarium, which is a software for computers which creates a realistic sky with the artwork of the constellation and it's actually free of charge. And I'll put the download link in the description below so that you can have a little look and browse. Now, I finally just want to talk about artificial satellites and aircrafts before we finish. Observers might see an artificial satellite which is moving slowly from north to south at reasonably bright points of light in the sky before fading when they enter the shadow of the Earth. But aircraft are actually really easily identifiable through the green and red right of way navigation lights and flashing white identification lights. So if you are looking at uh, flashing colours of light, you may want to consider that it might be an aircraft. So, thank you very much for watching and I will hopefully see you guys again next week. Bye for now!